the government has said a lot about the fact that this seven hundred billion dollars might not just be a blank check that we're actually buying assets and who knows maybe we'll even make a profit on the assets and i've hinted and other people have hinted that well that's very unlikely because these assets they're probably not worth what the government's going to pay for it. And one could argue that even some of these are worth zero. And I've gotten some letters, and I've heard other people on the news actually say, well, how could they be worth zero? They're backed by mortgages, which are backed by houses, which are the collateral. That's where the collateral comes from, the collateralized debt obligations. So in this video, I'm going to do uh, hopefully a reasonably straightforward example to show you why some of these collateralized debt obligations could be worth very little or maybe even nothing. So let's say, let's just do something simple. Let's not talk in terms of you know, millions of homes. Let's talk in terms of 10 homes. Let's say I, would, I were to create a very small uh, mortgage-backed security. Essentially, I give out 10 mortgages. Right? And let's say each mortgage is a million dollars. So let's say that's 10 times 1 million more. 10 times a million dollars. And, I, and the people who I give those mortgages do buy $10 million houses. right? So I create a, cor a corporation, a special purpose entity, whatever, for the sake of this mortgage-backed security or for constructing this, these collateralized debt obligations. That's my company I create, the balance sheet of it. What are the assets? Well, I have 10 mortgages times a million. So I have 10 million in loans, essentially, 10 million in mortgages. And they're collateralized, or they're backed by the underlying ha houses that were that these mortgages were used to buy. Ten million in mortgages, ten million more, right? Now, how is this special purpose entity? We'll call it an SPE. How is this SPE funded? Well, it's essentially funded by the people who are buying the collateralized debt obligations. And collateralized debt obligations are essentially just debt that is used to fund these these mortgages. And what's interesting about a collateralized debt obligation, see, in a, in a mortgage-backed security, I would have just given these 10 million mortgages. And then, then this, in, in this corporation, I would have just issued, you know, I don't know, I would have issued 1,000 shares. And so each share would hold 1 1,000th one of this value, right? That's a mortgage-backed security. But in a collateralized debt obligations, I split it into buckets. So what I do is, let's say I borrow, I borrow three tranches. I just call that buckets. I'll make these the three buckets. So I go to some people and I borrow, I don't know, of that 10 million that I essentially lent out, I borrow, I don't know, let me say, I'll make up a number, $5 million. $5 million from these people. And these are the senior debt holders. So essentially, these people are going to get, both this debt holder and this debt holder has to get wiped out before this guy gets impaired. And impaired just means that you get less money than you lent. Right, so I borrow five million from somebody else, and they're going to get the, the the lowest. I'm going to pay them the lowest interest rate because this is the safest bucket. So think of it this way: let's say these these ten mortgages. Let's say that I'm getting, I don't know. Let's say I'm getting eight percent, and let's say that I'm paying. Let me draw the. They're giving me five million dollars. Let's say that I'll pay these guys five percent. And why are they willing to take a lower interest rate? Because Essentially, any defaults on this side will hit these two buckets before it hits these people. So this will be a very, a very safe debt instrument, or an arguably very safe debt instrument. And I'll, I'll do more about that in a second. And let's say I borrow another, let's see how to make the numbers worth right, another $4 million from some other people. So they give me $4 million. I have to pay a little bit higher interest to them. I have to pay, I have to pay let's say I have to pay 6% interest to them. Right? And then finally, I borrow some, I, I borrow, let's see, I need another million dollars. I borrow a million dollars from people who are willing to take the biggest risk. So if there's any defaults over here, these people are going to be wiped out before these people get touched. And actually, we can figure out the appropriate amount of interest, right? How much money is coming in per month before anyone starts defaulting? Let's see, I'm getting $800,000 in per month. That's the inflow. And then on the outflow, let's see, I have to pay these people 5 million times. 5%, that's $250,000. So that's how much I'm paying to that tranche. 250000 And then 4 times 6%, that's 200, 6, 240000 minus 240. So that's what? 800 minus 490. So then I have 310000 left. Right? 
310,000. So I can essentially pay this 310,000 per year to this tranche. So they're going to actually get a 31% interest. And that sounds great. And that's why they call that the equity tranche normally in a CDO, because those people get a lot of upside. But guess, guess what? If there's any defaults, these people get wiped out first. And just to make this example clear, let's, let's just do it very simply, because you could model this out and assume some type of prepayment, et cetera, et cetera. Let's assume that a year out, let me scratch this out right here. Let's say that one year out, Half of the mortgages, I don't know, the people refinance or they move or they sell their house or whatever, so they just pay off, they just prepay the mortgage. So let's say in one year, let me redraw this balance sheet in one year. So in one year, let's say five of those borrowers, so this is a year later, magenta is my color for a year later. A year later, half of those borrowers just refinance or they sell their house so and so they just pay us back 5 million dollars right so we get 5 million dollars i'll put that on the asset side of the balance sheet right this is assets assets liabilities and there's a bunch of videos on assets and liabilities and balance sheets if this confuses you and there's no equity in this company right cuz assets minus liabilities equity and i did that because these are special purpose entities their whole purpose is to structure these securities their purpose really isn't to be an ongoing operation that has you know net income in and of itself although there probably was equity and the bank who constructed this probably took it all but anyway assets and liabilities Okay, so we said half the people refinance. Those people were great. They were worth giving the money to because they paid off their loans in whole. But guess what? The other half of the people, they were they, the, 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 the title of subprime was, was deserving of them, and they default. And we have to foreclose on them a year later, right? But all's not lost, right? We don't lose that five million that we lent to that other that other those other five million people because they had homes, right? These are collateralized debt obligations. We are able to take their houses. Unfortunately, it's a really weak real estate market. And let's say, just for the sake of argument, that we only get, we take those five houses from the people who didn't pay, right? Five paid, five didn't pay. We take the five who didn't pay his houses. And let's say when we sell them, we're only able to get, let's say we're only able to get, I don't know, 60% on those houses, right? So 60% of 5 million, we're essentially only able to get $3 million for the houses we foreclosed on. So a year later, what are all of our assets? We get the $5 million in cash from the people who are good and, and, and paid off their mortgages. And then we get the $3 million from the people who foreclosed. And then we only got 60% of the original purchase price of the homes. We only got that on the foreclosure. That makes sense because credit's getting tighter and it's a tough mortgage market. And all of these houses were in South Florida or Las Vegas or whatever. But now what happens? What happens now? There's really no purpose for this entity to even exist anymore because everyone's paid off. There's no income streams coming in or out. So essentially, we'll just dissolve the corporation, give everyone what they're due. Well, this guy, he gets first dibs on it, right? He took the lowest interest rate in exchange for having the lowest risk. So that guy right there, I'll draw him in green because he's good to go. This tranche right here, he gets a full five million. That's great. He got 5% interest, and then he's fully, he got all of his money back. Sounds great. The CDOs look safe so far. But what about this next, next tranche, this 4 million guy? Well, he didn't, he didn't do so good, right? The 4 million guy, that's what he was owed. That's what he essentially lent the special purpose entity, this 4 million tranche of CDOs. He's owed 4 million, but guess what? After you pay this guy 5 million, there's only 3 million left. So this guy only gets $3 million. So for every $4 he lent, he only gets $3. So this guy gets 75 cents on the dollar. 75, well, that's 75 cents on the dollar, right? That's a 7 right there. I write my 7s like a European. It's I think it makes me sound more. Well, anyway. But what happens to that equity tranche? This guy up here, this $1 million, right? He thought he was a genius. He he lent this money and he was getting a 31% interest. Sounded good. And frankly, it probably he, the, the bank probably wasn't able to unload this to anyone because pension funds and a lot of these foreign governments, they only buy the safer assets, right? So this is the stuff that's probably sitting on a lot of these investment bank ba balance sheets. These are the smelly, toxic, stinky assets that people are talking about. And guess what? 
there's nothing left to pay this million dollars to this guy. There's we paid five to this guy. This guy didn't. He, he only got seventy five cents on the dollar, right? He was impaired by a million dollars here, and then this last tranche up here, he gets nothing. So the question is, these CDOs that are on bank's balance sheet, are they these CDOs? Are they a share in that tranche of debt? In which case, they're very safe. But I would argue, in, in which case, the banks probably aren't looking to unload them as quickly, or they can probably find buyers. Are they this tranche? In which case, maybe they're worth 75 cents. But you know, even at 75 cents, you're just going to break even. Maybe they're worth, you know, at 60 cents on the dollar. Maybe they're a good deal. Or are they this stuff? And if they're this stuff, then they really, really, really are worth nothing, at least in the example I just gave.